Hey everyone, and welcome to the second video in my One Joystick to Rule Them All series. In the first video of the series, I showed you how to build a very simple and inexpensive adapter to connect the Neo Geo joysticks to Atari compatible systems, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build an adapter to connect it to Amstrad computers, MSX computers, and the Sega Master System. All you need to build these adapters is a couple of suitable breakout connectors, a suitable cable to connect them together, and a joystick extension cable. So just a quick recap. As I explained in my first video, the Neo Geo AES was a games console released by Japanese gaming company SNK in 1990, and is famous not only for the quality of its arcade ports, but also the quality of the hardware itself. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the original Neo Geo arcade stick, and I think it's certainly a step up from the controllers that we had bundled with our computers and consoles in the 80s and 90s. In this series, I'm using these breakout adapters. I bought them from eBay, and the search terms that you'll specifically need for this episode's adapters are male DB15 breakout for the joystick end, and female DB9 breakout for the console end. I'm well aware that this connector is actually known as a DE9, but if you search on eBay you'll probably find about 5 results for that, whereas there'll be thousands for DB9. I guess that's just the way it goes. Thanks to a suggestion from a viewer on the previous video, this adapter will also be compatible with the later Kidney Bean style controllers and the Neo Geo CD pad, which require a 5V feed from the console to function, except in the case of the Amstrad machines, for reasons I'll go into in a moment. Because the systems featured in this video use the male DE9 joystick port and are electrically very similar, I'm going to be using my Atari adapter from episode 1 as a starting point, which I've since rebuilt using a DE9 female breakout connector and an old SCART cable. So without further ado, let's get started. Just a quick note on the Amstrads. I don't actually own one of these, but as Amstrad machines are compatible with the Atari joystick standard, they'll actually work with my original adapter design from my previous video as is in a lot of games. This includes the modification I made to be able to use the B button as an up button for accelerating in racing games and jumping in platformers. One thing that's very important to consider is that the Amstrad joystick port doesn't provide a 5V pin, so it won't work with the Kidney Bean or Neo Geo CD controllers. Bearing that in mind, and also sticking with the original Neo Geo stick, there is a small modification that could be made for two button Amstrad systems such as the GX4000. In this case the A button, which is pin 13 of the Neo Geo connector, moves from pin 6 to pin 7 at the Amstrad end, and the B button, which is pin 5 at the Neo Geo end, connects to pin 6 of the Amstrad. As I mentioned, I don't actually own one of these machines, so I'd love to hear down in the comments if you managed to put one of these adapters together and how well it works for you. In the case of the MSX, which thankfully I do own, there are a couple of very minor changes to our original design. The MSX is largely compatible with Atari joysticks, but like the Amstrad, does support an additional button. And thankfully for owners of the later Neo Geo controllers, it also provides 5 volts, albeit on a different pin to the Atari. With this in mind, when building an adapter for the MSX, the 5 volt feed for the later controllers is connected to pin 5 at the MSX end, with pin 8 staying at the Neo Geo end as before of course. Button A remains the same as the Atari version on pin 6, with button B, pin 5 at the Neo Geo end, being connected to pin 7 of the MSX joystick port. The ground, pin 1 at the Neo Geo end, moves from pin 8 to pin 9 at the MSX end. The Neo Geo stick is a truly excellent way to play all of those top notch arcade conversions on the MSX, and I can't recommend it highly enough.
now onto Sega's underrated 8-bit gem, the Master System. And it's great to see that there are more and more people starting to appreciate this console just lately. And to be honest, I think the controllers that came with it are actually pretty good, but there are more than a few games on here that do benefit from a proper arcade joystick. It's also worth pointing out that this adapter also works great with the various Master System variants, like the Sega Mark III and the Master System II, although it won't work with the Mega Drive slash Genesis for reasons I'll explain later. The Master System is yet another system that's largely compatible with Atari joysticks. In fact, the only difference from the Atari adapter is the addition of an extra connection for the second button, which goes from pin 5 at the Neo Geo end to pin 9 at the console end. A voltmeter confirms that we have 5 volts on pin 7, which is usually used for the light gun, and that means that this adapter should be compatible with the later Neo Geo controllers as well. Now I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Mega Drive, or Genesis, depending on where you are in the world. My plan was to cover it in this episode, but it turns out to be a slightly more complicated beast than the other systems I've covered so far, so I'm going to dedicate a whole episode to explaining how it works. It's already in the works, and I'm already playing with some prototypes, so that should be along shortly. So there we have it, a really easy and inexpensive way to connect these amazing controllers to your consoles, and a fun little electronics project as well. I've already had some fantastic feedback from people who've built their own adapters from my first video, including an Instagram post of a really nice modded stick from a user going by the name of RetroGlue 2.0. I also had some funny reactions to a picture I posted of my stick hooked up to my Atari 2600, so if you're interested in that kind of thing I'll put my other social media links in the description below. So please do let me know if you manage to put one of these together, it really makes my day to see them out in the wild and I may even feature your work in a future video. I have adapters in the works for the Atari 5200, the Jaguar and the PC, and of course the Mega Drive like I mentioned. But if there are any other computers or consoles you'd like me to have a crack at, let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do for you. Finally, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll hopefully see you again soon.